have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's about 12.30 midnight, Saturday night, on the 14th or something. I don't know. Um, this is actually the end of the video, but it's the beginning of the video, so... I didn't actually get to make this part, so we're going to be tearing apart the 3D printer, upgrading it with new parts. Here are some of the old parts. They're breaking, falling apart, being super glued back together. Um, it's just bad. It's bad. So we're going to we're going to replace this. So check it out. All right, stick around. Peace. All right, and we're back. Sorry about the poor lighting, but I wanted to show you guys. Um, oh, there you go. That's better lighting. I want to show you guys exactly what I meant by uh, by these were falling apart. So um, I'm replacing all the arms on my Delta Rostock 3D printer, and um, I'm replacing the the carriage portion that go on the on the rails, and I'm replacing the end effector part because it's cracking and such. Uh, you can see uh, just how bad these are falling apart. Uh, I couldn't even get some of these apart, and actually you can see that big giant crack right there. Um, and there are other cracks that are hard to see. There, this one broke off one day during like a 40 hour print. That one's cracked right there. This stuff gets, it's ABS, it's the second time I had to replace these, and they get brittle. They're right against the heat bed, and they just, they just get brittle. It's just the way things work. So my new design, okay, is, is like this. So the old design and the new design. The old design, you have these two pieces right here, and they're forcing uh, against each other. All right, you have to compress both of these arms in to hold, to pinch, right, to pinch the rod in. Okay, and so what happens is you is you push them together to pinch them, and you get these over time. You get these uh, these stress fractures where where this these want to just break off, and you can see this one's been glued back on. I know the lighting's terrible. This one's been glued back on. There you can see it's just cracked right there. It just breaks. So the new design, which I'll show you in a second, basically the rod sits against the edge and one bolt goes through there. Um, I've seen other people do it this way and I decided to redesign the original parts. These are still the original parts with my modification on the uh, uh, the belt, how the belt is attached, but everything else is actually the original style from the Rostock. And, um, and so this will basically allow no pinching, no pinching action, which it basically this should make this way sturdier over time. Even when this stuff gets brittle, it should be prone not to break. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'll show you what I'm done. I'll, I'll do one. I'll put one together so you can see what it looks like compared to the old one. You'll get an idea of exactly what I'm saying. This also makes this whole guy really small. Okay, so actually I can show you. Here's the old version, and here's the new version with the, uh, the little special camera mount. So it doesn't appear, you know, too much smaller, but when you look at it from this standpoint, and you don't have the arms broken off, uh, when you're looking down it like this, you can see I removed those wings. See that? Completely gone. No more wings on this guy. Uh, so this actually is a lot smaller part, and I was having problems with the with the uh, the end here actually hitting the edge or hitting the front, and I couldn't get. You can see where the center point would be on the edge of the bed right there. It's actually smashing the side of this. So if I were to have this guy up here, and I'd have this guy on the edge, I can't even get to the edge before I'm hitting. And so I couldn't actually use the entire bed surface because of this funky angles that I built. It's kind of just the way I designed it. Most people use round or uh, triangular shape beds or octagonal or something. Um, but I decided to, uh, to do square and I want to be able to reach the edge of these the beds. So. Anyway, I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Alright, so here's the difference. Um, you can just see right off the bat that putting these together like this on one on each side, there's actually a nut I'll see if we can see it here. There's a nut on the inside. Bad lighting, I'm sorry. There's a nut on the inside right here and a nut on the front. So the nut on the inside clamps the bolt 
in here and the nut on the outside pushes the um, pushes the rod in together so it pushes it together to fit like that and that's that's bad because then you're applying force on this whole piece which is why these keep snapping off right here and these just you know look at that look how good that super glue is holding it's actually breaking at the bottom there it went haha <laughs> super glue holds better than you think on this ABS it broke else it broke elsewhere instead of breaking where I glued it anyway um, so this is so much easier to assemble you just have one nut on the inside and then you put the bolt on the outside there's just one washer there the only uh, other change I did is I beveled this edge right here because you know this is pretty far away but this when it's at an angle it's almost hitting uh, so I had to bevel that out a little bit the other difference is is uh, if you were to look down these you can see that well it's hard to see because you're looking down in that fashion but these are further apart than these. These are closer together and these are spread further apart which will help me with with gaining a little bit more space when I said earlier moving this thing around so that's it. This stuff is tedious. It just takes time but this takes it literally took me hours hours to assemble all of these with this guy because you have to have so you have twice as many nuts and bolts and you have four times as many nuts <laughs> uh, or, you know washers and bolts I mean four times as many nuts so that's just ridiculous. So this is bam bam bam. Easy. So we'll see how this actually works out as far as durability. Um, but I think it'll be so much better. Alright, here's an example of how I was talking about these get pushed out. So if you look at this one, you can see let me get some better lighting. You can see the difference. See this nice arch? Look how bent this one is that is what I'm talking about and that just flexes this whole thing and it just eventually just breaks it off which you can see I've managed to glue that one back on too it's the kind of problems I'm talking about broke both the sides tightening it because when it's loose this whole thing can move around on that bolt and so if you don't tighten it down it doesn't work right like it, it's it slips around and then you get slop cannot have slop that's been my whole problem lately with printing the slop really affects the prints quality and everything all right guys once again sorry about the lighting I got these three done on this end now I'm working on the uh, the end effector now I have this light bar that I made out of a regular printed circuit board unetched and I just etched it and then soldered the resistors and LEDs onto it 5 volt power um, well this definitely doesn't fit on here for sure. Now there's a little thing I added. This is actually an onboard camera. I used to have a camera mounted on here and uh, let's see where is it? Is this guy? This is for something different. That's for this, but there's something different. So this guy was mounted on there pretty big. Uh, you can see the the size comparison of that camera versus this camera. It's big. Okay, this whole camera, the lens and everything is built in. They used to got the lens on this guy. It's sticking out the front. So what I did here is I didn't want this sticking past the edge of my end effector. And the only way to solve that was using mirrors. So I have on the bottom of here, I tested a bunch of different things to get the right angles. But I have here a mirror on the bottom. Now this is not an ordinary mirror. This is a mirror that is resembles this. So this is the double reflection side of this mirror. You get you get you see through the glass and then the reflection and then back through the glass and you get this really bad looking um, like uh, reflections in between the glass and the mirrored surface. This is the reflective side that is for um if I can catch the light. There we go. Okay. This is the reflective uh, reflective side. It's a polished reflective side. So it is perfectly um, reflective where this gives a double reflection so it's the same type of mirror but it's on this end effector and uh, I have to first of all I have to fix this because the ends stuck out way past the edges which I'm having a hard time showing you but they basically stick out way past the edges now because I shortened them remember everything used to be long so I'm gonna have to manipulate this piece I was gonna make a new one but I'll try to manipulate this first and I have to work around this mirror problem. 
see what happens. So anyway, I wanted to show you that. That's my new camera mount built right onto the, the hot end. I added this uh, heat sink because this camera gets hot and it's right above the heat bed and I've had some problems with this particular camera close to the heat bed uh, cutting out so hopefully it will work with this heat sink on there. It didn't originally have that but that chip gets hot. This is a LifeCam, uh, Microsoft LifeCam, the HD version I believe. No, no, not the HD version. There's one above this version. This is a regular Microsoft um, camera autofocus which still works but I had to adjust the lens uh, and so the lens is actually adjusted to the point where um, manually go in there and turn the lens so that out the autofocus is basically closer because I'm going to be focusing right here so I didn't want the camera sticking way out here so I'm using a double sided or I'm using a single surface reflective mirror to uh, optical grade to actually reflect the image which I'll show you All right. We made our modifications. Uh, everything works except I shorted this one out and burned it up. I don't have any here with me. I have some at work so I'll grab one there and we'll fix it later. Cut these short and I removed this tab completely because this is where the camera is at. And then I moved the LEDs uh, down further so that it doesn't reflect off the mirror and right into the camera. Um, so there you go. That seems to work okay. Now we'll move on to the next step, putting this all back together with the arms. Alright guys, so I really want to put this mirror on this little plastic part that I made. Not quite sure how to do that, so I think what I'm going to do actually is take some of my acetone and ABS and uh, start over with this one. Alright guys, so I have this little bitty mirror attached to this plastic bracket that I made. That's the reflector, or the reflective surface, the mirror for the camera. Right now it's being held on there with Silly Putty as I was trying a few things out. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my acetone and ABS and I'm just going to put a little on the sides on each side and that's how I'm going to actually um, attach that mirror. So if I can get this off, there we go. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can do this with, with, two, with one hand here. Just going to dab a little on this side. Well, maybe. I'm going to have to need my... Oh, look what I did. It's coming out. Come on, get off. Duh. Well, I put a little more than I would would want originally, but okay. Oh. Alright, I should have done that with <laughs> the other hand, but there you go. Little dab on this side, little dab on that side. It ain't going nowhere. I made a mess on the counter. Ah! Well, it looks like that little spot took the finish off of the uh, cabinet, so, uh, sorry about that, Mike. Whoops! Okay, after some frustration, no curse words, but definitely some frustration, I got this put together. Frustration was the fact that I made these such tight tolerances that the bolts just almost don't catch a thread and so I had to shave off a tiny little bit here and there I was a little frustrated otherwise it went pretty smoothly got this attached on here with this, which is my Z probe now my hot end originally I had an air tube on here uh, where I pumped in air through a tube from the bottom up to the top and back down to the hot end to cool the idea there was actually to cool the hot end to keep this area cool so it keeps it cool from the plastic, but that really isn't necessary, and I'm actually going to make fans that attach to the side rails here that blow onto the bed. So I went ahead and take this out. This is where I originally attached my wires, so I'll have to affix them to a different point. Um, and I want to make it so, um, originally I had this piano wire in here. It's pretty thick, and it really does, you know, pull around on the end of end effector and so I'm gonna try to figure out a way to to allow it to be a little more free moving with just the wires only and that will give give some of the friction off of this thing anyway there we are let's start putting this back together oh it's 12:30 at night what time is it? yeah almost 12:30. feeling I'm feeling it I'm feeling the pain but look at here I got it all together uh, I got a little bit of a mess to clean up. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got a snack on the goldfish. Um, that's 
that's good. Um, I'm happy. I got I got all my tools in here and a mess everywhere, but uh, but I'm happy with it. We have the new slide rails on here. They look good. I redid the wire, how the wire is attached here. Uh, originally, I had this. Uh, I don't know where it is now. I'm standing on it. Had this piano wire, you know, and it's it's very rigid. And you'd be surprised at how much that little bit of rigidness would actually affect this. Um, and then I tied it onto the side of here, sort of temporarily. I may make a bracket or something somewhere, but this seems to work for the moment. Um, the probe, Z probe, still works. And uh, the end effector is very small compared to the original one. I mean, the original one was uh, like this. You know, it stuck out pretty far. Can't really see, but you know, look how much further that stuck out. That gives me a good good amount of room. Got the mirror on there, but I think I'm I think I'm rubbing against uh, against well oh, right there. I'm rubbing, and I need to adjust that. So here's actually what the uh, live stream audience is seeing. Let me show you what the there exactly is the um, the hot end, so you can actually see it's working really well. I need to adjust it a little bit down, but I think it's because it's hitting. It's supposed to actually be sort of down. You can see how that movement actually, a little bit of movement makes a big difference. But look how crystal clear it is. It looks amazing. So, success. I will be doing some calibration work and stuff and... I may even poke around with it for another half an hour, but I gotta get this cleaned up so the kids don't take everything and destroy it around the house tomorrow. Probably hurt themselves with things such as knives. And that's it. Um, didn't show you this. This is 5 volt power and 12 volt power. I did just decided to connect those. Though, if you look at my old videos, you'll find they they were sitting here forever, literally like forever, and I never got to it. And so finally, I decided to get it done. So there you go, temporarily, that's what I got. Um, again, when I get the new bushings in, I'll actually be replacing this whole piece with a brand new piece that's totally different. I actually want to redo this and these ends uh, and make them adjustable so that I can get all this squared up because I think these two points, like I said, are closer together than these two. There are these you know, other points here, and so it's slightly out of round because of that reason. Um, Anyway, that's that's a whole nother video. So, that's it. That's all I got for you for the moment. Peace out. God bless. Have a good day. Leave a comment. Bye.